Thank you for the opportunity to present. I have no disclosures. Copaclasis is a highly effective obliterative vaginal procedure that has relatively low morbidity and can dramatically improve symptoms and quality of life. Stress urinary incontinence often coexists with advanced pelvic organ prolapse. We wish to explore whether midurethral sling placement at the time of colpoclysis impacts postoperative voiding trial failure rates. The primary aim of this study was to compare failure rates of first voiding trial within seven days in women undergoing colpoclysis with versus without midurethral sling placement. Secondary aims included comparing failure rates of voiding trials performed on postoperative day one and identifying potential risk factors for postoperative day one voiding trial failure. This was a retrospective cohort study of women undergoing copoclysis from 2012 to 2019. Voiding trial failure rates were compared in women undergoing copoclysis with and without concomitant midurethral sling. Voiding trial failure was defined as inability to void greater than or equal to two-thirds of an instilled volume up to 300 milliliters. The association between midurethral sling placement and voiding trial failure was examined controlling for potential confounders. Logistic regression was then used to identify possible predictors of postoperative day one voiding trial failure. Level of significance was defined as P less than 0.05. 119 women were included with a mean age of 77 years, 82% of whom were white. 45% of women underwent midurethral sling placement at the time of copoclysis. There were no baseline demographic differences between those with and without midurethral sling with regard to age, race, comorbidities, or prolapse stage. The midurethral sling group had higher preoperative rates of stress and urgency incontinence. The midurethral sling group also had lower mean estimated blood loss and was less likely to have a voiding trial on postoperative day one. Voiding trial timing was determined by individual surgeon preference. Failure of first voiding trial within seven days did not differ in women with versus without concomitant midurethral sling. The sling group failure rate was 22.2% compared to the 32.8% failure rate of those with copoclysis alone. The adjusted odds ratio was 0.6, with a 95% confidence interval from 0.18 to 2.1. 68% of the total cohort underwent voiding trial on postoperative day one. 33% of those had a midurethral sling at the time of copoclysis. Again, overall demographic data were similar between groups. The midurethral sling group had higher rates of preoperative stress and urgency urinary incontinence. Postoperative day one voiding trial failure rates did not differ with versus without midurethral sling. The sling group failure rate was 33.3% compared with 40.7% for those who underwent colpoclysis alone. The adjusted odds ratio was 0.93 with a 95% confidence interval from 0.27 to 3.23. In women undergoing postoperative day one voiding trial, preoperative post-void residual was associated with voiding trial failure rate with a 39% increased risk of voiding trial failure for every 50 milliliter increase in post-void residual. In conclusion, among women undergoing copoclysis, midurethral sling was not associated with first voiding trial failure within seven days or on postoperative day one. Increased preoperative post-void residual was the only variable significantly associated with postoperative day one voiding trial failure. This suggests that placement of a concomitant midurethral sling need not dictate the timing of voiding trial in women undergoing copoclysis. This information may be useful in counseling patients with regard to postoperative expectations and catheter management. Future research, including prospective studies, can better characterize perioperative voiding function and dysfunction to help determine optimum voiding trial timing and setting.